guess. It's okay? Great. I might have to sit down. So good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start this morning session. My name is Peter Trambusch. I have the privilege to chair this uh, session. I just want to repeat Alexander Sedmak's statement that uh, uh, please, I ask each lecturer to keep the time to manage the slot which is available for the presentation. And according to the uh, rule, uh, discussion will be at the end of the session. Uh, there is another uh, declar or announcement that the session will be recorded if anyone has any objection, just uh, let us know and then for that period uh, the uh, recording will be uh, interrupted. Is it allowed to record? Okay, thank you very much. Then let's start the session. Uh, the first uh, presentation is identification of crack positions and crack loading quantities from strain gauge date by inverse problem solution. And as far as I know, Randam Bukalif is the lecturer. Please, the floor is yours. And I will <coughs> try to remind you if you are close to the finish. So for the motivation, this picture left shows the demolition of the cabin roof due to material fatigue, and the second one describes the breakdown of the tanker due to crack growth. Therefore, it is important to detect the crack. There are many methods of crack monitoring. For example, there are methods that are based on the principle of weight scattering on crack faces. This method gives information about size, location of the crack, but it gives no information about loading parameters at the corrective, and the measurement during operation is problematic. On the other hand, there are methods to determine of stress intensity factors, for example, by application of piezoelectric elements or strain gauge near the corrective, but this method is not suitable for crack growth. Therefore, our goal is to crack detection and parameter identification during operation of the structure based on the remote strain measured at arbitrary points. That means we can calculate the boundary loads, the stress intensity factors, K1 and K2, crack lengths, crack positions, and crack inclinations. So this picture here shows the finite plate with two cracks. This both vector describes the, pos the position of these cracks and 2A describes the length of the crack, and alpha describes the dislocation of the crack. And this one describes the strain gauge. The approach to solve this problem is as follows. First, we formulate the direct problem, that is to determine the function which is dependent on the crack parameters and the boundary loads. If these parameters are known, we can directly calculate the stress field or the chain field at arbitrary points. In the next step, 
we solve the inverse problem, that is that the strain field at these points are known, but the crack parameters and the boundary loads and the stress intensity factors are unknown. So I come now to the methods for solution of the direct problem. This picture in the middle shows the crack in structure or in a soft model under boundary load. To calculate the strain at arbitrary point, we have used two similar uh, methods. The first one is the dislocation technique, and the second one is the body parts method. By the dislocation technique, the crack is replaced by distributed dislocations, and by the body parts method, the crack is replaced by, by distributed body forces. So we continue now with the dislocation technique and to model a finite plane with two cracks, for example, we assume an infinite plane with six cracks with corresponding orientation or four cracks, we can simulate our boundary and the remaining cracks are our actual crack. And then we cut out from the infinite plane and we get then our finite plane with two internal cracks. So here is uh, the boundaries and the cracks are simulated with dislocations. So and now I come to the direct problem for finite plane with two cracks. We have here a finite plane with two cracks on our boundary load and to calculate the stress at arbitrary point, we have used the superposition principle of two solutions. The first solution is the solution of, um, of the stresses at arbitrary points due to dislocations distributed along of the boundaries. And the second solution is the solution of the stresses at the crack <coughs> due to dislocations distributed uh, along the cracks. So the total stress in our overall problem is equal to the stress due to dislocations distributed along the boundaries plus to the stresses due to the dislocations distributed along the crack. So the, the stresses due to one dislocation located at the source point C is given with the system of equations. This vector describes the induced stresses due to one dislocation. Mu and kappa are elastic constants, and in this matrix are influence functions. And this vector describes the Burkes vector and containing two components. The first one describes the component of the dislocation in the x direction, and the second one is the dislocation in y direction. The first subscript of the influence function describes the component of the dislocation and the remaining two components describe the component of the induced stresses. So we simulate our crack with many dislocations, therefore it is convenient to use the dislocation density and the, re the relationship between the Burkert's vector and the dislocation density is given here. And now we get then the induced stresses due to all the dislocations with this integral equation, and here the dislocation density is unknown. To calculate the dislocation density, we use the boundary conditions first in local coordinate, and we get then singular integral equations. So at the boundaries, we have here these integral equations. In the left of this equation, describe the stresses at the boundaries due to all dislocations. And in this vector, describe the boundary loads, and in the direct problem, this vector is known, and in the inverse problem, this vector is unknown. And at the crack faces, is, that is traction free, and the left here describe the stresses at the crack due to all dislocations, and it equal to zero, and we have used here the normal and the shear stresses. And finally, at the crack tip, we have displacement jump is equal to zero. Now we uh, use a numerical solution in local coordinate using gauss kubitschek quadrature. First, we, we normalize the integral equation over the interval minus one and plus one by using this dimensionless coordinate. 
SJ and Pi. And then we will write the dislocation density as two functions. The first is the fundamental solution, and the second one is the unknown vector. And the fundamental solution for the internal crack is given here. And now we get then these numerical equations at the boundaries and at the crack faces and at the crack tip. So W describes the white function and PK describes the collocation points and SI describes the integration points. And we have here one, two, three system equations. So and now to calculate the elastic field in, in global coordinate by using Kausiewicz quadrature, we have to transform first the, the boundary loads and then the unknown vector and the dislocation and the um, and this matrix. So and here we have used two transformation matrix. The first one is to transform the first subscript. So the dislocation components, and the second one is to transform the component of the inducer stresses. And now, by using the matrix notation, we can calculate our vector p. And now, finally, we can calculate the strain or the stress field at arbitrary points with these equations. And the unknown solved by the inverse problem are the crack positions, crack lengths, crack inclinations, and the boundary loads. So and now I want to present some numerical results of direct problem. We have here a finite plate with inclined crack, and the position of uh, the position of the crack is given here. We have here the dimension of the plate. We have here the length of the crack, the inclination of the crack, and the boundary loads. And we have calculated the strain component epsilon xx and epsilon yy with the dislocation density, and we have compared it with the finite element method, and we can see that the result is similar. Now, I come to the scheme for identifying correct, uh, correct parameters. First, we measure the strain components with the strain gates, and then we calculate the direct problem with the dislocation method, and then we solve the inverse problem with genetic algorithm, and finally, we determine the crack parameters and the stress intensity factors. Now, I come to the numerical results of inverse problem. I will start with the sensitivity analysis. So, parameter identification dependent on number of strain gates. We have here three cases. The first case, in the first case, we have used four strain gates. Three and minutes. This quick, okay. And in the second case, we have used eight strain gates, and finally, we have used 12 strain gates. And in this table, we have here the given problem, uh, the error between the given problem and the end results. And we can see in the small breaks, four gates are sufficient to uh, determine the boundary loads and the crack lengths and the crack inclination and the crack position. And if the crack is large, we need good gates to identify these parameters. The second example is the parameter <coughs> identification dependent on dimension of the plate. We have here virus dimension of plates, and we have here the given problem and the identified results for these parameters. Now the first, these parameters are unknown, and we can see that the parameters can be identified up to 60 millimeters for the dimension of the plate. And the next, uh, and uh, another example is the correct de detection and parameter identification in finite plate with two inclined bricks. So we have here the boundary loads, the both crack lengths, the port inclination, and the both crack positions are uh, unknown. And here the given problem, and we have yet identified results, and we can see that the given problem and the identity results is similar. The next example is the semi-infinite plate with inclined crack. The unknown are the boundary load, the position of the crack, the crack length, the crack inclination, and the stress intensity factors. And we can see that the given problem and the identified results is similar. And we have here 
the similarly finite state with thinking edge crack. And the uh, unknown parameters are the boundary level, the break length, and the break inclination, and the what's stress intensity factors. And we can see that the given problem and the obtained result is similar. And the summary of my talk the elastic field and the stress intensity factors for finite and semi infinite plate structures are calculated by using the distributed dislocation technique. And based on the data, measured surface strain, crack detection, and parameter identification are obtained by solving inverse problem. And in the future, we will verify our concept experiment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for keeping exactly the time. And 